All right, fantastic. Good morning, good morning, men of God. Welcome to the National Men's Prayer Call. Men of God, we get excited every Tuesday and Thursday morning because we get this opportunity to come before you not only in prayer, but God has blessed us tremendously over the past going on 10 years to bring you Rhema Word, on time word. And Lord, we just said, want to say thank you for that this morning, Lord. We're going to praise and magnify your holy name because this day wasn't promised. August the 23rd, 2022, you have blessed us to witness another day. We're not going to take it for granted because the Bible says if we don't praise you, the rocks will cry out and praise you. So Father, we, we're going to take time out this morning to just want to say thank you. Thank you, Lord. Oh, God, we're just so grateful this morning, Lord. And Father, I just thank you right now, Lord, for the, each and every man that's represented it this morning on this call. And they're on this call for one purpose, and that's just to hear a word from you. And Father, we thank you right now for sending the man of the hour to pour into us this morning. He's not a stranger to this call. He's part of our administrative team, but he's such a dynamic speaker and just an awesome man of God. So, Lord, I thank you right now, before he even comes up to speak, you allow him to speak, not of himself, nor the flesh. But, Lord, I thank you, Father, he glorify you in all that he does. And, Father, we thank you for him, blessing him and his family and blessing his architecture, business, his firm. Lord, just thank you. Anything he puts his hands to will prosper. Thank you in advance for that. Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you for that. And Father, we just thank you right now, Lord, once again. You've blessed us to witness this day. And Lord, I just thank you right now for what you're doing in the midst of us, Lord. And Father, I'd just like to say in advance, Lord, I thank you for the rain. I know this might be something trivial, but thank you for the rain here in Dallas, the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex, Lord. Thank you for that, Lord. And we still hear it grumbling because it had never rained that hard in any generation. But God knows what we need of. Oh, God, I want to, <laughs> oh, my God, Lord, thank you this morning, Lord. I, I get excited when I know what you're doing and how you're doing it, Lord. Father, your word says that your thoughts are not all thoughts, nor your ways always. That's why, oh, God, hallelujah, thank you for that, Lord. I get excited, I get excited because the word of God is just so real and it's so good. And you're right on time. God, thank you for that this morning, Lord, I thank you. Thank you for the word of God. The word of God said it would never return void, but it would accomplish that what it was sent out to do. So we thank you for that this morning, Lord. <laughs> oh God, we thank you as we can come boldly to the throne of grace that we may find help in time of need. We thank you right now, Lord. This is the time that we need your help. And Lord, we're grateful. And we thank you right now for those that are continuing to stand on the front line there, the front, the first responders. Lord, thank you as they continue to work tireless. Ask right now, you just cover them right now with the blood of Jesus. Thank you for the hedge protection around them, giving them, keeping them safe. Thank you right now, Lord. And Father, we just ask right now in your name that you would just flatten the curve. We can't, but you can. And Lord, we thank you. We know that you work behind the scenes. Thank you for that. And Father, we just thank you right now, Lord. For those right now, Lord, continue to, Father, just, just seek out to you, Lord. Thank you right now for answering their prayer. You said before we even ask, you've already answered our prayers, Lord. I thank you, Father, because the Bible says that you are the beginning. God, in the end, we thank you for that, Lord. We thank you for being who you are. The Bible also speaks on you as being king of kings. The Bible says that you're Lord of Lord. The Bible speaks on you as being the lamb. The Bible says that you're the shepherd. The Bible says you're the living one. The Bible says that you're faithful and true. The Bible says you're the witness, the creator. The Bible says that you're the line of the tribe of Judah. This is just some of the characteristics of who you are. <laughs> oh God, we magnify your holy name. Now we thank you this morning, Lord. I thank you right now, Lord, for blessing us each and every man's household that's represented on this call. Thank you for blessing the household, Lord. For fuck, those are even in its need of a financial breakthrough. They ask right now, because the Bible says where there's two or three gathered that you're in the midst. We thank you right now to meet that need right now. As I'm speaking right now, meet whatever it is. You know what, what they're in need of, Lord. 
And I just thank you right now that you meet that right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we thank you right now also, Lord, for complete healing in each and every man's body from the crown of his head to the sole of his feet. We bind any attack that the enemy may try to come against us. The Bible says that there's no weapon formed against us will prosper. <laughs> oh, God, we thank you for that this morning, Lord. I thank you right now for complete healing right now each and every, each and every man's body. And Lord, we just ask you to continue to lift up our founder, Dr. Kenneth Green. We just ask you to continue to give him the strength that he needs each and every day of his life. I thank you for this outstanding man of God. Thank you for First Lady Green to stands right beside him. Thank you for her. And Lord, we just thank you right now, Lord, for blessing us, Lord, with our helpmate. Uh, we're grateful for our helpmate because the word says a house can't stand if it's divided and two cannot be together except that agree on the word it is the word of God. In the beginning was the word and the word was God. So we thank you for that. Thank you for blessing our offspring, Lord. We thank you for those that are going to their workplace, for those that are going to school. Lord, I ask right now, you continue to hedge protection around each and every school campus worldwide because we know that the enemy is always lurking. Lord, I thank you for your standard and your protection over them, Lord. Cover them with the blood of Jesus. Thank you for these administrative people, the administrative that's going back to school. Some of them on their way to, to school is still fearless. Lord, I ask that you would just give them a peace, a comfort to do what they were called to do, Lord. Thank you for protecting them, watching over them, Lord. I thank you for that. And Father, we just thank you right now, Lord, for those in need of prayer. As you continue to lift up my sister Grace Edwards as she continues to get stronger because she walks by faith and not by sight. I thank you for her. <laughs> thank you for our brother Clifford Edwards. We thank you for the progress that he's making, Lord, in his rehabilitation. <laughs> Only you can do it. Man can't, but you can. Thank you for that. And Lord, we just ask you to continue to lift up Megan as she gets stronger and stronger, Lord, because she trusts you and not in man. I thank you for her. And Father, we just thank you right now, Father. I just ask right now, you, Father, can continue to lift up uh, Brother Lawrence, uh, Lawrence Franklin. Lord, just lift this young man up right now before you. I ask right now for the direction, the covering. Most of all, Lord, allow him to be able to trust in you. And Father, we trust you and we know that you're able because we've seen you've done it. You've done it before. And I know you can do it again. I thank you for him right now. Lift him up before you. And Lord, we just thank you right now for all that you've already done. And we cover you right now. We thank you right now for it right now. And we give you all the praise and all the glory on this day. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, good morning, brothers. And thank you, Reggie. You are just awesome. I always enjoy hearing you pray. Because the, the fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. And there's so much power in prayer. So every Tuesday and Thursday morning, we come to you and we bring the power of prayer. We want you to be, we want to be able to pray for you and with you. But in addition to the power of prayer, our formula for success is this. SG times uh, PD equals MM. So spiritual growth times professional or, or personal development equals maximize manhood. And we want to help maximize manhood. But just a couple of quick housekeeping rules before we go any further. Please like, comment, and oh, share right. all of the, the topics we're doing. We have someone who just popped on and we have to get them muted. There you go. So as we uh, like, comment, and share, we want to be able to expand the algorithm so that we can reach more brothers, more men, and just give them this, this empowering message that with their spiritual growth times their personal development, they can achieve maximized manhood. And this morning, we are so honored, we're so excited because we have our own, uh, one of our national administrators, uh, Mr. Reginald Wright. And Mr. Wright, you know, Brother Wright is just, he's always on 
target on point. You know, there was a storyteller from uh from uh in the old in antiquity that he just told stories and changed the whole world. Well, that's the the quiet, humble demeanor that uh, our brother comes to us in today. He's a storyteller, but he shares information in such a way that it causes you to receive it, and that causes transformation. So, with no further ado, it's our honor to present to you our friend Reginald Wright. Reggie. Amen. Amen. Can you guys hear me? Yes, sir. All right. Well, first of all, I just like to say thank you, Dr. Mac, uh, uh, for uh, putting such a, a wonderful and much needed topic. Well, first of all, thank you, Brother Reg. Thank you for the prayer uh, that we just is so uh, delightful, man, to hear your voice. And and it provides it actually provides comfort to the speakers before we present. So thank you for the word of prayer and always the word of encouragement. Thank you, Dr. Mack, man, for putting such a wonderful, powerful, timely, uh, uh, time-sensitive mess uh, theme together for us this month. And we're in, we're in, when I just started counting, we're in message seven of seven messages. So six have already been uh, delivered to us. And when you asked me, Dr. Mack, to speak, I, first of all, I don't feel like I'm qualified to even render any words on emotional and mental health. But when I really think about what it has done for me, I said, well, hey, I've got to share what this has done for me. And so if I have to uh, give a, a topic for today, I want to just say, as we think about emotional and mental health, I want to encourage us to get in the game. That would be that if I had to uh, give a topic for today, uh, my topic would be get in the game. And what does that mean? That means I've got to make a decision. When somebody says get in the game, what they're asking you, man, is to make a decision, to, uh, 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 to declare. And so after listening to the previous six messages from uh, wonderful speakers who have profound uh, knowledge and expertise in the subject, I would submit to anybody that's been trekking along with us in this journey. I think we have now come, and I think I can be the one to say this, I think we have now, because it's, it, you, it, it, you know, Dr. Mack, every now and then, you have to come to a point where you got to make a decision. You just can't hear good information. You have to come to a point where you have to decide, am I going to do something with this? And so for anybody that is joining us in this uh, uh, series for the first time, I would encourage you to go back and listen to the previous six messages that have been brought before us. And then I would encourage you to get to make that decision to get in the game. But as I think about uh, the subject matter of mastering my emotion and mental, my emotional and mental health, the first thing that stood out to me, and this is something that I've been dealing with myself, I, I think as we men, we first of all have to gain the awareness that this is just not when we talk about emotional and mental health. This is just not something that's relegated. When we, when we typically hear these terms, we think about females. We think that this is a feminine issue. We think that this is something that I, as a man, don't have to deal with. I, as a man, have number two, have overcome this. Well, I submit to you and I encourage any man that is listening to uh, ask yourself uh, and to be reminded that this is not something that's just relegated to females. And so in thus saying, when we think about this, and this is just me talking, I'm not an expert at all on this, but when I think about emotional and mental health for women, I think women need emotional security, mental security, particularly needed from their, 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 their husbands. But men, when I think about us, I think we need emotional and mental stability. I think there's a lack of emotional and mental, uh, uh, and, and the emotional and mental health, I think there's a lack of stability 
And, you know, one, and I'm reminded of that every day uh, around 5.30, just to try to wind down. I turn on ABC, the evening news with David Meyer. And, you know, it's, uh, I'm reminded of that. In the first 30 seconds, he goes through all of the things, the, the, the news items that he's going to talk about in that segment. And just if, 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 if it's not about uh, weather, many times the, the, the issues are related to something that's caused by a man whether it be a president, whether it be um, some sexual immorality issues, it, it, there's police brutality. Uh, but as I look at every day, every day, as I look at the evening world news, I'm seeing issues that are man related. And so I submit to you today, it just made me, it also made me think about, and I say this and I share this all the time, it makes me, and I'm going to continue. This is my theme verse of the year is Ezekiel 22, 30. I'm just, I'm always hearing God's voice when he said, I'm searching for a man who can stand in the gap, who can build up, the, who can first of all, build up the wall and stand in the breach. And so I submit to you, number one, point number one is we think about emotional and mental health. Guys, God is looking for men who can get in the game. Thus, therefore, we have got to have an understanding on what it takes to master my emotional and mental health. And so we've got to, because God, there's too much in the balance. There's somebody's life that's hanging out there in the balance, waiting on you. Somebody today is waiting on you to get it together from an emotional and mental health standpoint. There's too much. God is waiting on you. God is looking, as he said, as he reminded us in that Ezekiel passage, he is looking for men that can take charge. But what is that going to, but what does that require? It requires a man that has emotional and mental stability. You've got to be stable at the wheel if you're going to be a leader. You've got to be stable at the wheel. There's too much. There's too much that we have to deal with. So God is looking for stable men. And so all I, I'm doing today is taking a break from these, from these heavy hitters that have come before us and to just encourage us to get it together, to get into, to get in the game. And so well, I will say this from the from the, 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 the previous speakers and all that I've gained and learned from these guys, you know, I, I, I start to see, you know, what happens if I don't take heed to what has happened. If I don't get control of my uh, emotions, what kind of things happen? And so I, I say this, I, first of all, I think about, that I'm always thinking about people Peep others that is, you know, examples of, of seeing this played out when I don't uh, heed to things. And I'm always in, in the Bible, I'm, I'm so fascinated with, with Peter because he's one that was, was, uh, was not together, but then he was put together. And I'm reminded of when, you know, that when they came for Jesus, and we talk about it all the time, preachers always talk about it, when Peter cut the man's ear off and Jesus had to say, no, we ain't gonna roll like that and pick up the man's ear and put it back on. That was a classic example when I even just look in the Bible of when we don't have good emotional and mental health, it affects our decision. Number one, it affects our decision making process. And I've said that in a humorous fashion, but just as Peter, cut the man's ear off, that was a lack. That, those are the type of actions that come forward when we don't have emotional stability. Our decision-making process is, is, is altered. And then we see it a, a second time when he, when he then denied that he even was a follower of Christ, when he denied. And when, so when I, when I thought about that, I said, when fear sets in again, it affects 
our decision making process. So again, I submit to you that when we don't understand our emotional and mental health, it affects, it will affect the way I make my daily decisions. Uh, another example, my, my dear wife, I love her to death, and she is one, if I have to say, that is very stable at the will because she's so aware of her emotional and mental health. She spends a lot of time working on her emotional and mental health. And so as a result, when, when she has to make decisions, her decisions are affected by that. She had a case in point. Um, we've been doing business. We, we did a uh, little partnership project with another entity. And she got word that there were some decisions that were made without her. And that was okay. We were okay with that. But then no one informed her that, hey, these are the decisions that we're going to make. Now, me being somebody that's not fully uh, in control of my emotional and mental health, that's not stable, I wanted to pull a Peter. I said, well, what we're going to do, we're out. We're going to tell them this and that, and, and we're out. We're, we're, we're not, no, we're, we're not going to do business with this entity. And so, and, and by right, based off of what they did, by right, that would have made sense. By right, that would have completely made sense. But my wife being so in control of her emotional, she says, no, Reggie, we're, we're not going to do it this way. That's the way they would expect us to handle this. That's the way most people would handle this. We're going to do it in this manner, a much more calm a much more thoughtful and godly approach. And this is the way, that's how we're going to handle it. And right there in that instance, it reminded me, I was like, Reggie, people that don't have control, they respond exactly like you were going to respond. Third person I think about is our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. If anybody that can model for us, what does it look like to walk in emotional and mental health is no, no one other than our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I think about even that night, going back to that period where uh, uh, I was just talking about where Peter cut the ear off, but going before that, when he was in the Garden of Gethsemane, when he prayed to God, this is how a man that's fully in control of his emotions, that's stable at the will, this is how he responds to a situation. He says, God, this situation that is before me is, uh, and I'm just paraphrasing this. When he was praying that night, before he was to be crucified, he says, God, this situation is unbearable. If it is possible, let this pass from me because I don't want to do it. But then he comes back to say, what? If not my will, let thy will. Gentlemen, if anybody is going to take control of it, this is how you've got to respond. Because when we get off this call, there are going to be things that are going to happen in our life that we do not even foresee. There's going to be somebody that's going to cut us off. The minute we jump into our car, it's going to be somebody that's going to say something. Somebody that's not going to do something. How do we respond? How do we show stability? Even when Jesus was at the cross, as they, were, as they had nailed, pierced his hands, nailed him to a cross, he still was asking God to forgive. Forgive them for they know not what they do. This is how we take, this is how we show stability. Again, a lack of, a lack of uh, emotions, it breeds confusion. It breeds confusion. And I've talked about this before, and I can't say it enough. So I encourage us, again, to take heed to this. A lack of emotional and mental uh, stability will breed confusion. And confused men, and I've talked about this before, they do what we live in a cloud of fog. Confused men, when we don't have control, we, we, we live in a cloud of fog. 
And what does foggy man do when we got that cloud over us, which is confused and you see it in men's lives today by the, the, the way that they care to conduct themselves. What do we see? As I now alluded to when I opened up, every day I see it. I see the problems that confused men are creating every day on the world news. We create problems when we don't get control of the things that we've heard from these previous six speakers, these experts on, when we don't download this knowledge that's been before us, we stay in a state of confusion and we make decisions out of a confusion, foggy mindset. And so I submit to us to come out of that. But how? How do we come out of it? Three things I want to say, and then I'm going to turn this thing back over. If I'm, if I'm going to jump in the game and I'm going to say, okay, yeah, Reggie, I'm, I'm sold in. I'm going to take this step. I'm going to jump in. First of all, I got to start looking at me. I've got to really be honest with myself and say, I need help. I, that means I've got to admit it. I've got to admit that I need some help. This was hard for me. My wife and I, we go to marriage therapy. I call it marriage therapy so that I can prevent from being in there for marriage counseling. So marriage therapy is a lot funner than being in marriage counseling, but you need both of them, guys. Um, so as, I, as we've been going to therapy and, man, I start, you know, I'm, I'm always thinking we're in there just to talk about my wife and, you know, we end up talking about me a lot. But I really started realizing that as of late that I thought I was good emotionally. Even as we were going through this, we've been going through this, I'm like, I'm, I'm good. But I had to admit when I started looking at some of the actions that I have uh, taken even in my marriage, some of the things that I even do in my marriage is from a lack of having emotional stability. So I had to come to that. It was so freeing for me, so freeing. I had to come to a point to say, you know what? You're right. I had to admit it. Then number two, you got to seek help. Like, what do I do about this? What do I do about this? And again, I submit to you, there are, people, there are men that are part of our National Men's Prayer Call who are experts in this subject matter that can either help you or direct you to help, get help. Reach out to somebody, if that's you, if you're one of those men, reach out to one of our administrators on this call and get help. Get accountability. We always talk about this around the National Men's Prayer Call. We believe in men being accountable around the National Men's Prayer Call. What does that verse say in Ecclesiastes 4, 9, I think somewhere around there, where it says two are better than one. For why, why Reggie? Because if I fall down, I've got somebody there to pick me up. Guys, when we're dealing with this emotional, we're trying to become stable, we're going to fall down. And as I'm trying to get my life and to get uh, to master this for those of us that are new to these concepts that these brothers have been downloading to us, I'm going to fall and I'm going to stumble and I'm going to want to give up. So I've got to, first of all, admit that I need help. Then I got to get help. And then I got to bring some fellows along with me because this emotional thing is nothing to take lightly as we have learned. And then the last thing I, I will say is, I've got to move forward. I've got to be committed to moving forward and walking daily in it. God is waiting on men to take that step to say, he's not looking for perfect men. He's not looking for men that will have, but he is looking for stable men. He's looking for men that are going to say, I'm going to make that step to get my, to get my emotional and mental health in line. And so that means daily. I've got to make a daily decision to walk in this. I got to admit it. I got to seek it. I got to seek help. And then I got to walk. I got to make a conscious choice every day because guys, if not, that's the only way we're going to limit and to prevent the things that I see daily 
on the world news. Guys, I hope that this has encouraged us. We have two more messages to end this series. Uh, this was a halftime breather to encourage you to make a decision to say, I'm going to get in the game. I'm, on fin I'm getting ready to get in the game. I'm going to listen to those previous six, and I'm going to finish out with these two brothers that are coming up to speak to close us out. Hope that this has encouraged you guys. Get in the game. Make that decision that I'm getting ready to do this. Amen. Amen. Dr. Wright, we thank you again. Brother, it's always a pleasure. I, I just want to really take the time out just to say how much I enjoy this um, this format. Dr. Mack, you know, uh, with Benny Franklin and, and Dr. Green establishing it, this really is a blessing to my life, for real. And, you know, it, it reminds me of what Reginald is talking about. One of the things that we got to do, that we're proactively, um, you know, participating in the process of us evolving. That's what it's all about, because we have choices. You know, I could go back and sleep in the bed, you know, get back into the crib like uh, Jay, Jay Mac and, and, and just enjoy myself. Jay, you know, I'm just saying. But now we, we, what, we, what we do, though, though, is we gather together as brothers, arm in arm, as a band of brothers, and, and go in and try to have iron sharpen iron. And that's the part that I really, really love. Now, Dr. Wright has reminded us of our emotional mastery. Uh, that, again, it's a proactive process. The key word proactive and not reactive. The last thing we want to do is the difference between therapy and what, what Reginald, what you said? Counseling. And, and counseling, right? <laughs> I like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, like, I like that better. It's the difference is it's that proactive approach to it. Because uh, the emotionally out of, out of control man is the most dangerous creature on the planet. Let me repeat that. The emotionally out of control man is the most dangerous creature ever created because we will kill. We go to extremes when we are do it. We, it's a matter of life and death. And the difference between the emotionally controlled man and the unemotionally controlled man is the ability to cast vi vision versus vengeance. <clears throat> When I'm emotionally controlled, I can cast a vision of how I have this thing in. Reginald gave the description about how his wife said, no, we won't do this. We're going to cast a vision on it and we'll follow the vision versus respond in vengeance and then have an emotionally controlled piece, right? And so that's the difference in it. One of the biggest things that I, I believe that God has gifted us. Reggie, this is what I'm saying. God has gifted us one of the most incredible gifts that we can always have. It is the gift of choice, mm. the gift of choice, right? But the most dangerous gift God has ever given us is the gift mm. of choice. It's because then now how do we handle it? That's the same debate about is it the gun issue or is the person holding the gun? Right. Because it's all about choices. And if we make the wrong choice, if we make the right choice, we go into reward. If we make the wrong choice, we go into consequences. So the problem with consequences is that you don't get the ability to control and mitigate what those consequences are. You're going to be serving time. You're going to be doing it. It goes into somebody else's hands because you, you, you relinquish that, right? Now, God has gifted us with a sphere of influence that people are looking at us to make the right choices, to be emotionally stable, to make sure that we navigate this, wor this world, not only in knowledge, but in wisdom. What is wisdom? Wisdom is rightly applied knowledge. We want to be wise because if we, if, we, if we know better, we do better. But that ain't true. All of us have been knowing better and doing something, but we go out there and show our whole tale, whole one. And so here, the fact of the matter is knowledge is, wisdom is rightly applied knowledge. And so we want to go out here and have emotional mastery so that we can go ahead and show people what it looks like to be a disciple of God. Uh, Reggie gave us three things that we got to do. We'll make it quick. We got to admit that we need help. And I'm going out on a limb and saying, all oh, y'all need some help. Y'all good with that? <laughs> Especially you, Andrew. I'm kidding. But all of us need uh, some help. Second thing, we need to seek help. Mm -hmm. 
We need to be proactive in it. We are supposed to be masters. It's the same thing as we go into uh, uh, to, to any type of dis uh, discipline like karate. You want to go through levels. You go through the white belt and you want to be five degree black belt masters. You want to see evolution along the way. We need to seek help. You got to get with somebody else. Whereas I get with Pop over here and he tell me, son, uh, whoo, you misstepped there. So let me give you some knowledge. He helps me master that, right? Last thing is that we got to be committed to make it a discipline. We got to be committed to keep on to make it part of the, how we are made up. In our mind, we already know what we're not going to do. If a situation arises the next time, what does it take for when you to go into the room and say, hey, I'm going to make sure I do this? Mm -hmm. You know, I think when you see people with... Uh, um, with other addictions, alcoholics, or whatever it may be, they go into the room and saying, I'm not going to drink. I'm not going to be involved in this place that is going to compromise how I, I, I discipline myself. But, boy, as Christians, boy, we willy-nilly, boy, we'll be out there and be, ooh, we'll be shaking the dice and just rolling it, right? We can't do that. We have to walk discipline. The world mm -hmm. is counting on us. So, gentlemen, with that, we just, we, we, we again are reminded why this is so important. So outstanding job, Doc. Reggie, you know, you know, I love you like a brother. Uh, I appreciate that and the wisdom that you brought into the table. So let's pray, gentlemen, and we'll get us on out of here. Heavenly Father, we just stand right before you and just give you um, uh, all our attention, mind, body, and spirit, and to with you, Father. And we thank you for the word that has gone out today, Father. We thank you for the wisdom that comes with being uh, a master of our emotions, that the world is counting for us to master that, that we resemble God, Father. And that's a place that we proactively posture ourselves. Mm -hmm. And so we thank you for that. Keeping that in mind, understanding that we're probably gonna get tested today. And Father, I claim victory not only for me, but for my brothers as well, Father, as we master this text, that we won't be repeat offenders of just being ignorant and unwilling to, to master our emotions. Father, whether we stand in the gap and be the men that you've called us to be, we love you, we honor you, and now we serve you. In your son, Jesus Christ's name, we, we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, J. Mac, you muted. J. Mac, you are muted, sir. Yes, sir. Before we close out, I just wanted to um, just to um, admonish all the brothers to be proactive in terms of your health. Um, James Butler, who is uh, a long term uh, uh, listener and, and participant, um, has uh, contracted COVID and it was compromised. Uh, he's uh, coming out of it. But we just want to keep him up in prayer and keep and let all the brothers know that we even though that they've released all the the reduced all of the, the social distancing and the mandates and the mask and everything. Just be proactive, wash your hands, keep a distance, and if necessary, make sure that you do cover, have a mask when you go into places that are populated. With that being said, um, we're going to see you guys on Tuesday, and thank you for just being a part of this, this program. Amen. 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 Amen.